business of governance for Mr. Governor Babayudu Songulu is serious business. Let's share with you his recent engagements from the governor's office. The Babajide Songolo government achieved a major milestone in the development of the Lagos Rail Mass Transit with the formal inauguration of the first phase of infrastructural completion of the Blue Rail Line in Lagos. In his speech at the National Theatre Station before getting on board the train, the governor did not only go down memory lane on the historical vision of rail transport in Lagos, but gave a detailed expose on efforts, initiatives, strategies and challenges that has made the inauguration a successful one. For us to put this event in proper perspective, I think it's important for us to go down memory lane. It was in the year 1902, that is 120 years ago, when the very first tramway system was launched here in the city of Lagos. The tram connected the mainland, which is Ebutemeta, to Lagos Island. That tram quickly became an important part of the social, commercial, and economic life of Lagos in the early 20th century. 120 years later, we are making a remarkable history on the final infrastructure completion of yet another historic rail line, the phase one of the Blue Line Lagos Mass Transit Corridor. Let me make it clear that today, is not the official commissioning. It is the inauguration of the infrastructure completion. You, remind, you remember that we've had an event where the final construction on the sea crossing, we celebrated it right about a, a year and a half, about two years ago, where we completed the sea crossing at the end you know, of Marina. You will also remember that we also did a celebration for the final tea bean, you know, in which the global chairman of CCCC came to the country to inspect and to see when we handed and uh, where we launched the last tea bean, which was about six, seven months ago. It was at that event that we made a call and we made a commitment that we will finish we will finish infrastructure-wise the completion of the Blue Line before the end of 2022. By my last check, today is the 21st day of December in the year 2022. This is a government that has kept its promise, that has kept its word, that has given a commitment because we're people of integrity, we're people that understand and appreciate that once you give a commitment, nothing must stop you. And I'm indeed happy that today, before the end of the year 2022, we're all here to witness the formal inauguration of the infrastructural completion of the Blue Line. The real commissioning, I will talk about it because we're waiting for a big elephant to come in and do the commissioning for us. Until then, we have important face of test running to do to ensure that everything is in place is in order for us to kick off a full commercial operation of the trucks, of the trains. This milestone in the development of rail, Lagos Rail Mass Transit is a culmination of several impactful reforms in the transport ecosystem of Lagos since the beginning of this fourth republic in the year 1999. Our leader, Ashwaji Bola Ahmed when he was sworn in in 1999, he inherited a Lagos metropolis that was struggling on all facets, with all challenges. And before the end of his first tenure, was battered. And Dr. Dayo Mibiriola, like I did say, was the first chief executive of Lamata. I was opportune, humbly so, to be even on the path of the first inauguration of Lamata at that time. We used to use Lamata as a test board to go on a lot of World Bank study tour to understand, to appreciate of what public transportation is all about. And so at that time, it was launched, the Greater Lagos, a strategic transport master plan 
for Lagos, which laid the foundation of several things that we're beginning to see, not only in the rail, but also in the post rapid transit system, in also the waterways infrastructure. I want to acknowledge and thank the visionary leader of our leader at that time. And like I said, we were part of his cabinet and we're watching and we're seeing, we're studying. And today we can see that that seed has grown to become the biggest transport infrastructure in the entire sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you all very much for being part of the birth of Lamata. And so over the last two decades, that master plan has fully implemented by successful government has grown from strength to strength. I am grateful to Almighty and to you all good people of Lagos for the opportunity you have given us to be at the helm of affairs today. The completion of the infrastructure for the first phase of the Blue Line is a strong testimony of our commitment to building on the legacies of our heroes past. I want to also say that the first phase is a 13 kilometer stretch from Maltu to Marina. And the day we're going to do the official commissioning of the rail track is also the day we're going to launch the official groundbreaking for the phase two, which will be from Marine, which will be from Maltu all the way to Kokomaiko. So we're not stopping at all. Ain't stopping it until when we complete the entire 27 kilometer corridor. So that will also happen pari passu on that day for our contractor to start the phase two without any idle time. And it's important for us to say that this rail corridor will be powered by electricity to be supplied by a standalone IPP. Our vision for an integrated transport system is enunciated in the traffic management and transportation pillar which is the first pillar of our economic agenda. What we're about is ensuring that the entire ecosystem of our integrated mass transportation system is completed. You have seen all of our intervention on the road, the bus rapid transit system. Several thousands of buses have been procured from the high capacity buses to medium capacity buses to last mile buses, even to taxis, just to be able to reduce journey time and to give our citizens a journey experience that is next to none. On the waterways as well, we have also injected a lot of infrastructure. We have completed nine out of the 17 jetties that we are building and they are ready to be handed over to our citizens. We have procured 22 high capacity ferry boats to move our citizens from one part of the city to another. Journeys that usually take two hours on the waterways now takes less than 40 minutes. Indeed, from Falomo to Ikorodu, you can do it on the waterways at less than 35 minutes. That is what we're talking about. The final phase of that integrated urban mass transportation system is the rail. I'm happy all witnessing the official infrastructure completion of the first in series of the six rail infrastructure for the rail that we have. And we have said it, that the red line before the end of our administration in May. Indeed, we have actually stretched ourselves by before the end of first quarter next year, the red line infrastructure, which in my view is even bigger than the blue line, will be completed by the grace of God Almighty. We believe that ours is an integrated that connects road, road infrastructure, rail infrastructure, and waterways infrastructure which will make journey time seamless for our citizens. Coincidentally, this location is central to our integrated internodal system. You will see when we move from here and we go to Marina, that is also very central because at Marina, you will see that we're connecting with water, we're connecting with rail, and we're connecting also with the road infrastructure. That is the master plan and that is the integration that I want to put together, you know, in all of this. And I think it's also important for me to thank Mrs. French Development Agency who are also working with us and ensuring that that connectivity happens very, very, very quickly. I'm also happy to inform us that all the three strains that we require for the Blue Line are in the country 
are with us. The very first one are the ones we are going to ride on this afternoon. The two others are also in the country, and I'm excited that CCCC were able to keep to their words to ensure that the trains get into the country before the official commissioning today. Let me close by saying a word of appreciation to everyone that has been involved in the Lagos Mass Transit Blue Line project. From immense professionalism that has been put forward in this project. It's important for me to acknowledge the visionary role of our leader, Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Timibu, who was the designer of the modern Lagos. <coughs> he is today on the ballot of APC as a presidential candidate. And we're excited, we're happy that the success that we have received, that we have seen in Lagos, can indeed be transformed and be transmitted into our nation globally. And so for us, we're routing, we're believing that is the man that is best fit for the job, and God would see him too. It's so important for me to acknowledge and thank my big brother, the Honorable Minister for Works and Infrastructure, for Works and Housing, His Excellency Mr. Babatuni Raji Fashola, CON, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who during his tenure as the governor laid the foundation for the Blue Line in the year 2010. I was also privileged to be in his own cabinet at that time. And the vision and the audacity at that time was that for us as a government, let us do what appears to be impossible. Let us build an intra-city rail infrastructure for our children, for our children's children to see. If all we said at that time was that the first tram was built in the year 1902, what is wrong with us? Why can we not dream the dream? Why can we not envision it? And that was why we took that bold step to have taken the right of way on the Lagos Badagri Express Road, where we were moved from a four lane highway to a 10 lane highway, even being a federal government road. And you can see that that infrastructure is going on and is going on very well. I'm happy to also say that we'll be completing our own portion of Lagos Badagri Express Road within the first quarter of next year, which takes us to Okokomaiko. The federal government has committed to take it on and continue that road construction up onto Badagri. And in the middle of that alignment is where we have the phase two of the blue line, which will go from mile two all the way to Kokomaiko. And, my, and my, my commitment is that the phase two of it, it's at grid level, is going to be done quicker, faster, and smarter. And we do not have the high level of, you know, um, of bridge crossing that we had that slowed us down on this one. So the phase two, we believe we should be able to do it in a more smarter and quicker form. CCCC, do I get a commitment on that from you? Yes, the man says yes. And so we will deliver the entire corridor for our citizens. I also want to thank and put on record the support from the Central Bank of Nigeria. The leadership of this bank use their differentiated cash reserve requirement to innovatively work with some financial institutions and we're able to all put our creative minds together and so it's important for me to thank on the blue line Messrs. access bank sterling bank and fidelity bank who had worked with us to have the creative financing option for us to bring this project to completion i think they deserve a round of applause it's also important for me to thank our consultants Messrs. kpmg who the money the Managing partner is here, thank you very much. And CPCS, who continues to be our handheld consultant throughout you know, this entire project. We're indeed happy, we're grateful to all of your time, to all of your efforts, to your criticism on this project. And we all can see that that has come to fusion here. I want to thank the management and staff of LAMATA, which today is led by indefeatable engineer Mrs. Abimbola Akiajo, 
I think she needs to be upstanding so that we can we can actually clap for her very very well. Abimbola, thank you very much. I was still on the phone with her 1 a.m. today, this morning, and I was asking all the difficult questions. I know how pushed I have pushed you, but indeed you have shown that you can do it and you are capable of doing it. Thank you very much. With you, your entire staff for relying, you know, and believing that Lagos deserves this at this time. Please take a bow and sit down. I think it's important that we also thank Dr. Dayo Mibiriola, to thank Engineer Biodu Dabiri, to thank Engineer Benga Dairo. They were people that I knocked at one point or the other. I know all of the push I used to embarrass Benga Dairo that you are not anything. You don't deserve anything that you tell me you are from TFL. Forget all of that thing. You know, but I'm happy that all of you can see, you know, that the only reward for good work, for more work, is good work, which you have all displayed today. And our Commissioner for Transportation, Dr. Fred, who coincidentally too was a director in Lamata when it all started. Today he sits as a Commissioner for Transportation. Fred, thank you very much. I know how many times I bust you as well. But we can see that all of that is coming to play here today. Let me use this opportunity to thank our House of Assembly. Because in all of our journey, if we do not have you know, a forward-looking house, which is led by the Speaker, it becomes difficult for them to even understand what we're trying to do as executive. And you can see that it can bring about you know, um, each one of us speaking from different sides. But we understand that in separation of power, everybody has a role to play. And they represent, we, represent, we respect each other. But we know that with the cooperation of the Lagos State House of Assembly, we continue to receive that tremendous support from you, Mr. Speaker, and all the 39 others. I want to publicly thank you, encourage you to continue to do your very best for your constituents and for our citizens, because with the partnership, Lagosians will continue to receive and be the ultimate beneficiary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and the Lagos State House of Assembly. To the Lagos State Cabinet, we cannot begin to thank ourselves. This is the job that we have signed on to. This is the calling that we have given Lagosian, that we will roll up our sleeves, we will get our hands dirty, we will do everything to ensure that the very best of our time is given to Lagos State. To further demonstrate the Lagos State government's commitment for a greater Lagos in the area of multi-modal transportation system, especially through waterways infrastructure, Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajude Somolu, recently commissioned the Lagos State Waterways Monitoring and Data Management Center, proudly put together by the Lagos State Water Authority, LASWA. The Lagos State Governor, who in his speech highlighted the various strategic efforts of his government in building a vibrant and efficient waterways infrastructure, noted the tremendous benefits, opportunities and advantages the commissioning will have on water transportation for Lagosians. What we are here today to do is to further demonstrate our commitment to the Greater Lagos Project, to the Lagos that we see that is rising. And we mentioned it when we started this government, that under the team's agenda, traffic management and transportation, which is the first pillar, continues to hold a strong component of all of our economic agenda and all of the things that were promised Lagosians. And I'm sure you know that one of the cardinal points of that pillar is the adoption of what we call a multi-nodal transportation system, which basically it's meant to advance waterways infrastructure, rail infrastructure, and of course, reduce road infrastructure, because that's where we have all of the major congestion today. In the last three and a half years, this administration has invested massively in the waterways infrastructure, and assets have been procured to encourage and to promote public water transportation in the state. And I think people have mentioned it, one third of Lagos is actually surrounded by water. And so that's why it has shown that out of the old 20 local government, 15 of them 
have one body of water or the other being transverse around it. And so if one third of Lagos is surrounded by water, it means that indeed any forward-looking government must take water transportation very, very seriously. And so that investment will continue to make. We'll continue to build additional jetties, which is why I think about seven or eight of the 15 that we're constructing are com being completed. And so we need to hand them over to our passengers and to all of our operators. We just didn't stop at infrastructure. We needed to also join you, you know, as, as boat operators to set up Black Ferry. And like the MD of Black Ferry had said, today I think we have over 20 ferries that are carrying between 60, 50, 40, 30 passengers. We do not buy anyone that is 10 passengers. We will ensure that there are high capacity passengers that can move people from one part of the city or from one jetty or one ferry terminal to the other. And the third arm of public water transportation is safety, which is why as a regulator, LASWA, we have invested so much, so much in LASWA and we're happy that today we'll begin to see the effects of those investments. And to put safety standards also as a, as a front line, we have worked tirelessly with both the private sector and some foreign partners who, through the British government, through what we call the Future Cities Nigeria, and we're also seeing cooperation from the French government to the French Development Agency. These two agencies that are foreign agencies are working with us. You know, the future cities have actually designed extensively in the last two years, you know, a case studies and a business model to tell the entire world that water transportation in Lagos, Nigeria is feasible, is bankable, and it's something that investors must take very, very seriously. So I want to thank um, the UK government, the future cities for supporting us, and of course thank the French Development Agency as well, because they are also doing consulting job for us to be able to tell would-be investors that they've done extensive, extensive work and water transportation in Lagos is viable, is visible, and it's something that the private sector needs to make investment in. And it's important for us to talk about the statistics. About three and a half years ago, it was less than 100,000 passengers that were being ferried. Now, I'm told by... In an, in, over 14 million have been ferried on an annual basis. So you can see that indeed it's been a sector that we have continuously seen as a growth path, as a growth channel that can improve, you know, the means of livelihood, the journey time of our citizens in the city. We've also seen a significant reduction in both mishap. We've achieved this through massive inter inter interventions in safety equipment and the donation of black jackets across all the 15 accessible local governments that we have. And I need to emphasize this, because one of the things that has been belaboring a lot of people is safety on water. And the statistics don't lie. You know, that's what they've said. It's moved down from 15, 18 that we used to have to just two. You know, and, and that for me... It's, 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 it's a big, big, big plus. What we're doing, we're saving life. We're ensuring that people are keeping with compliance of the regulation on the waterways. And all the boat operators, like they've come up to also acknowledge, we have donated several life jackets to them. And we've also ensured that there's no reckless driving on the waterways. So compliance has been so high. And I want to thank you. I want to thank all the operators. I want to thank all the citizens also for believing and ensuring that they keep with all the security and safety regulations that has been put forward by last one. And so our gathering today is really to further deepen our commitment to have a safe and secure waterways transportation. And so we are commissioning newly established search and rescue units that will be responsible for patrolling and enforcing our waterways rules and regulations. We have a big command and control center on land. Now we want to commission a big command and control center that has been established specific for the waterways. And after that command and control center, we are also handing over
two additional patrol boats to enhance safety and security on the waterways. We're not only doing that, we're enhancing gadgets such as DJI, aerial drone, blue eye drone for waterways search and rescue. And we're also launching the USAFE rescuing gadgets. That's one of the ones that intriguing to me and I'm sure we demonstrated here today. In addition, we're also commissioning the first in kind waterways monitoring and data management center. Waterways monitoring and data management center. I'm told no arm of government have the data center that we're going to be handing over and be commissioning, you know, here today. And so this will make the monitoring activity on our waterways seamless. It will enhance safety. It will give access to real-time information and gather data for continuous improvement of the inland waterways in Lagos. These are all acquired and established to consolidate our efforts in making the waterways safer for all of its users. It also demonstrates our unparalleled commitment to providing a viable alternative for transportation solution that will complement other nodes, which is the rail and the road transportation. Gentlemen of the press, you will be invited with some select stakeholders before the end of next week. This government gave a promise and we said that we're going to complete the Blue Line rail infrastructure before December 31st of this year. I am still keeping to the word. Next week, gentlemen of the press will be invited to see the official completion of the Blue Line infrastructure. We will take you on the ride. We will take you on the journey. We will tell the Gaussians that you have experienced it. You have seen it. This government kept its word. We said we are going to complete the red line before we end the year 2022. And I'm happy that we're on track, we're on budget, we're committed to ensuring the completion of it. Thank you very much. After the completion, we will ensure <clears throat> we will ensure that all the safety requirements is fully ticked. All the boxes are ticked before we start operation. Because for us to start operation, people need to understand how to board a train, <coughs> how to disembark, how to go through turnstiles, how to use the carry card, how to ensure that all the facilities in the train stations are seamless. So we'll take our time. We'll take negotiations in different batches. We'll take stakeholders in different batches. School children, market men and women, officers in banks and in other institutions. We'll take our citizens around the train stations free so that they understand how the operations are moving, how they will be done before we now start the full operation which we believe will be seamless. We gave a commitment that also this government started the red line from inception and we will complete it before the end of our administration, before May next year. The red line also will be fully completed. And completion means that we have rolling stock that will be running on it. On the blue line, my last set of trains have arrived, the port, and they'll be cleared within the next couple of days. The red line, the trains have arrived, and I'm sure you know that they're waiting for operation. And why are we emphasizing this? We're not just a set of public officers that will give fame and flimsy promises. We're not just a set of public officers that people cannot go to bank when I say go to bank, go to sleep with. When we give a commitment, we we'll ensure that no matter what is happening, we we'll keep those commitments. We've gone through an era where the whole world was shut down for over a year, but we don't leave to excuses. We don't leave to reasons why things don't work. We gave those commitments, and we're keeping those commitments. And it is for you. It's about your life. It's about your children. It's about ensuring that this city can indeed be a resilient a forward-looking mega city that is working, that is efficient, and that keeps, you know, to all of the tenets of any big city of its kind in the world. And that's why I'm also excited that the GM of Lasema, 
I've also come forward to say that there is no way you will have a big city like this. An emergency and response and search and rescue will not be on our front line. Because our government is about ensuring that we can keep life, we can keep property safe. Ahead of the 2023 general census in the country, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Sonwulu, has described a credible population census as a vital data to enable the state government plan and deliver effectively the much expected social services to Lagosians. The governor who made this known at the recent stakeholders summit on the 2023 population and housing census and the launching of the national census strategic implementation plan in Lagos, posited that with the availability of technology, the next census exercise will not only be credible, but will give a clear and true census figure of Lagos as the most popular state in the country. Your attendance here is a clear reflection of the importance that we place to this exercise and a collective commitment to ensure that the desired objective is achieved right around the country but especially in Lagos State. We cannot emphasize enough the critical role that a credible national census plays at achieving effective and result-oriented planning. This exercise is extremely, extremely important because apart from the population figure, the census will also provide us with vital data and statistics in many other areas that will enable us to plan better, plan well, and be able to deliver more effectively deliver better infrastructure and provide social services to the good people of Lagos State. As you are all aware, and as we mentioned, the last official census was in 2006. The result of that exercise indicated, wrongly, I must say, that Lagos population was just a little over 9 million. I was in government when we conducted that election, that census. And Mr. Deputy Governor here was our leader in that exercise that worked with MPC. Mr. Deputy, thank you very much for those exercises. You are still back in government and you also be leading us on this exercise today. Of course, that nine billion, that nine million was reviewed upward to twelve billion, twelve million seven hundred and seventy-two eight eight four in twenty nineteen, making our state the second largest officially after Kano. But we all know, Abi, we all know, this number alone, if you go to Alimosho and you add the Kurudu and just put a little bit of Osho there, it will surpass it. Is it not so? But we all know. But we want to be compliant. We want to be law-abiding citizens. We want to be a government that is responsive, that is responsible, and will continue to live with the tenets of the law of the land. Although Lagos has always contested these figures, we have always been clear that they do not reflect the actual population of the state. It has remained the official population figure upon which national planning decisions and some resources allocation have been based. And I think it is important for me to emphasize this. Is this same all figure that is used to determine, you know, all of the resource that is allocated, all of the funding that comes from Abuja, and we know that we were not fairly treated. Is that not so? We know. But I'm happy the chairman is here, and he has brought his respective national commissioner for them to see, for them to hear, for them to listen, that indeed, the one for next year, not only are we going to enter the same trouser, we are going to ensure that the right thing is done and that we correct whatever anomaly, whatever injustice we have. And it's not perfect. Check the INEC figures. Check the number of PVC that are being talked out. Check the number of registered voters. Check the number of uh, polling units that they have at INEC that is going to be the determination of next year's election. Far ahead of the next state. Far above any other state. And this continues to remain the most peaceful, the most economically driven, the center of our state, the center of our continent, sorry, the center of our country, and it continues to provide so many other resources. So we need to say that that next year census, we're going to take it very seriously, and all of us, all of us, will ensure that we'll play an important role so that what is deserved, what is due to us, 
will be given. And we trust this chairman. Don't we? We trust this chairman that he will do justice and he will do it right. We have in front of us another opportunity to get it right. Perhaps for the first time in our history, many of you will be familiar with the controversies and tension that has accompanied all previous center of exercises. We cannot afford to have this disturbing outcome happen again in 2023. Thankfully, we can now count on new technology that makes enumeration easier and more credible. In that way, it is that warming to note that the planned 2023 population and house census slated for April next year will be a digital census, taking advantage of digital tools and technology, and they will meet us here in Lagos as the center of digital technology. It is therefore my um, singular honor as the governor of Lagos State to formally inaugurate two members of the Lagos State Technical Committee and the Lagos State Expert Rate Monitoring Committee for the Engineering Regulation and Monitoring um, here in Lagos State. I so therefore inaugurate all of you. Those were the exact words of the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Songulu, to formally inaugurate the Technical Committee and Expert Trade Committee on Engineering during a visit of the President of Koran and his members to the Governor. The Governor, who equally emphasized the strategic relevance and importance of engineers in the infrastructural development drive of the state, charged the two committees to live up to expectation in their professional calling. This inauguration of the Lagos State Technical Committee on Engineering Regulation and Monitoring of Corrin is the dawn of a new era that will allow Corrin to revolutionize the practice of engineering in the country as a whole and put an end to mediocrity in the profession. Engineering must therefore take its pride of place and be the driver of development efforts in the state and in the country. Let me therefore congratulate Corin for this achievement, which has widened the scope of the authority. I know that given your exceptional track record, this will translate into greater developmental gains for our states and for the nation in general. It is also worthy of mention that members of the committee were selected from very reputable organizations with extreme care and diligence. I therefore want to congratulate members of the two committees for being found to be deserving of this selection. I urge you to justify the confidence that's been reposed in you by performing these assignments with maximum commitment and credibility, being guided by the terms of reference guiding the committee. It was a glorious jubilation with praise, worship, and dance to the glory of God at the ninth Bible lesson at the 2022 Lagos Christmas Carol of Nine Lessons with the theme, A Stone of Grace. <laughs> Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajide Songulu, who read the ninth Bible lesson, thanked the congregation for their support and equally expressed hope for another glorious and fulfilling experience next year. The ninth and the final reading for this wonderful 2022 carol service was taken from the Gospel according to St. John's, the first chapter reading from the first verse to the 14th verse. The word was made fresh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness 
did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that although that all through him might believe, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was a true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and in his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, both of God. And the last verse. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the night reading for tonight. Let me very, very, very warmly acknowledge every living soul that has been part of this glorious service this evening. I cannot begin to mention each and every one of you, but indeed, you are glorious, you are important, and you are marvelous in the sight of the Almighty. I want to thank you all very much for coming. There is no better time for me to thank you. The old, the young among us. I want to thank the kings and the queens. I want to thank the man and the woman. I want to thank all of us, students, workers, daddies, mummies, for gracing this event. My prayer is that if you have come for this year's carol service, God Almighty will keep you, will keep you, will watch over you, and if the Lord tarries, will all witness in good health next year's carol service together. And finally, from the Governor's Office, the All Progressive Congress APC gubernatorial campaign, as well as Lagos East Senatorial Rally at Ikorodu, was indeed an exciting political carnival and jamboree, with the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Somolu, charging the people to ensure victory for the party in the forthcoming elections. The governor, who made his presentation in Yoruba language, used the rally to present to the electorate the candidates of the party vying for various positions. Lagos East, Ikorodu, Somolu, Epe, Ibejulaki, Ikosiejiri, Koshofe, Ijede, Imota, Ereto, Eche Gonio, Agoiketu, Agoiketu, Bariga, Eche Goni, Ibeduleki, Ibeduleki, Epe, Ikosi Sheri, Imota, Imota, Ibokobayeku, Ibokobayeku, Ikorodu West, Ikorodu West, Ikorodu Central, Ikorodu Central, Ikorodu North, Ikorodu North. Thank you very, very much. Oh, boys. Uh -huh. State boys. Thank you very much. Ati Bere, Noni Yo. Ati Bere, Noni Yo. Ejeka Bere, House to House. Campaign, Casa Fungo Pomo, Pe Ati Deto, Ati Wasa Dubo, Ati Wafi, I want candidate, Ati Wafi, I want Latori Senator, doing good. 
Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Distinguished. Doing good. Doing good. Most distinguished senator, Miguel Ateto Kumbo Apiru. Bam Bam. I do prefer long for Thank you very much. Who is supported for? Let you know. Oh my. Ikea. The golden song. Ikea. Ikea. Go to law. In Las Vegas. Baba Alec Penny. Wale Raji. Wale Raji. Talk to my Lolet Cossi. I was a fan. Talk to Lolet Cossi. That's you. I pay a lot. Cafila, you. Thank you very, very much. You better like Amma, <laughs> I'm a duper one. If you like it, two. Only you, go one more. If you like it, then. Orekoya. Orekoya, show me you. Orekoya, show me you. Apata. Apata, Bariga. Bariga. Apata, Ganga. Skaten. Femi Saeed. Femi Saeed, yo. Eh. Oh, two, ba, 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 she, lo, ba, 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 Scatello, 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 Amo Hukalu, and Paisen, and Tedico Bowan, and our candidates in here, not only senatorial, House of Red, at the House of Assembly, Bonile, Post of Putoko, APC, not okay, from both. From top down, that's only presidency. Was a Jagaba, you call a met to the Jagaba, eh? Tell of Bao, that's only a sure you call a met to the boot. Don't distinguish senator. So we ask of rep members. If I'm a senator, worry you. Go ahead, demand. Go for our house of assembly. I think governor chief, I'll be back. Government, APC program, APC program, APC program. Am I a couple of you? Go for a say, we do para a bonfire or two. Am I a she or Pasha Commander Road? Inshallah, Inshallah, by God's grace. Go by the January, 
I'm a president before. I'm a immortal life. Hey! I'm a president before. I'm a president il est ici, 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 il est Let me open up the door. Lagos East, you know me. Regional Road, East, you know me. Lagos East, you know me. Hey, let me pay. Market Town, you know me. East, you know me. That's for all of us. Food Bank. You know me, you know me. You know me, you know me. You know me, you know me. I share. Hey, you know. Hey, you know me. You know me, you know me. You know me, you know me. I share, I share. You know me, you know me. 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 A ti kogwa ato ya le kolo wo yi Ema e kon kulo fun yi o Ema e kon file yi se ton E pi si ni o Ola wa dro ti kogwa wa Thank you all very much for coming It's been an honor That all of you have turned out here in large number The governor equally highlighted major key projects that will be commissioned by the state government as well as the president of the country in the nearest future Candidates in House of Rep to all of our candidates in House of Assembly, we did happy with all of the things that we are doing. I want to say that in February, it's the presidential election, and Shua Jubola Ahmed Chinubu will be voted in as the president. Our senator will be voted in as the senator. All of our candidates in House of Red will go in. And in March, by the grace of God, it will be the turn of the House of Assembly and the governorship election. And you can see it that in Lagos East, like I said, in the month of January, before the election, Mr. President has agreed he's coming to help us open officially the biggest rice mill in the country, the immortal rice mill here in Lagos East. Similarly, he will be coming to come and commission the legislative board here also in Lagos, in Lagos East. East. He will be coming to commission the Ritchie Payment Road from Eleko Junction to Epe, here in Lagos East. Lagos, Lagos, Lagos East, are you not happy? We are you happy. You will be receiving, Mr. President, next month in the month of January. All of these are international magnificent projects that the government has brought to Lagos East. Where we are now, just one or two kilometers away, I'll be coming back in January to commission the famous Ipakodo Road. And you can see that your road has been repaid. Going towards the dead end is ongoing. If you go to Shomolu, it's ongoing. If you go to Pariga, we are doing it with Shomoli Road. If you go to all new Sakrani in Lagos East, we're doing it. In Efe, we're doing it. In Kochofe, we're doing it. I say, God, thank you very, very much. It's nice to have you. And it's an honor to have all of you turn out here in large number. I say, God, thank you very much. And that's it from the Governor's Office segment on the City of Lagos TV show. No city today in Nigeria can challenge the strategic importance, relevance, viability, dynamism and influence of Lagos. This is our beloved city. Thanks for watching.